Well, spring has arrived, and so I thought perhaps I should come out from my hibernation. And as I look around, I notice that nature is also waking up. There are things beginning to sprout and bud and to bloom. And when I look around at nature, something else I notice is that there is growth and there is death. Wherever there is life, there is growth. Wherever growth has ceased, there is death. Even those things which seem to have reached their full maturity, there is still growth occurring in some respect. An old tree still produces new leaves and branches now and then. And it seems that we're not so much different in terms of psychological or spiritual growth, that as long as we live, as long as we're here in this world, in these bodies, it seems that there's always room for growth. And that's certainly the case in my own life. I'm always learning something about myself, discovering something, recognizing some area in myself, some issue perhaps that needs to be addressed or resolved something that I need to work on or work through or to let go of. And at the same time, it can be very easy not to see these things or to deceive ourselves into believing that we're done growing by avoiding or averting our attention, denying or repressing. And sometimes we might delude ourselves into believing that we've got everything figured out, that we know everything there is to know and that we've come as far as we can go, and that we have no further to grow. And it may be at times that we're no longer in a perceivable state of growth or awakening or discovery, but not because there's no more room for that sort of thing, or rather it's because we've put a stop to it. We've stopped growing because we're unwilling to admit to ourselves that we still have areas that we need to grow in. We've stopped waking up because we've convinced ourselves that we're already fully awake. We know all there is to know. Our eyes are wide open. But in reality, we may have many blind spots, many things that we fail to see, partly because we don't want to see them. We don't want to admit to ourselves that we've still got things to learn or that there's still things we don't know or understand. Or perhaps more often than not, there are simply things which we don't want to own up to because we're ashamed. We don't want to admit to being wrong or being ignorant in some regard. We don't want to admit to making mistakes. We don't want to admit to being selfish or self-absorbed at times or whatever it happens to be. There may be a bit of ego invested in some kind of self-image that doesn't allow for these things, whether it's the image we have of ourselves or the image we present to others. There are certain things that don't fit that image, so we ignore them or deny them. For example, if that image is of someone who is highly intelligent or well-educated, it's very difficult to admit when we're ignorant about something or when we're wrong. If the image is of someone who is emotionally mature, it's difficult to admit when we're overcome by our emotions. If the image is of someone who is righteous and morally superior, it can be difficult to admit when our behaviors are immoral or unethical. If the image is of someone spiritually advanced, someone who is awake, someone who is conscious, it can be very difficult to admit to our own unconscious tendencies. And I see this quite a bit in spirituality. There can be quite a bit of ego in spirituality when you're particularly attached to some tradition or practice or teaching or just to the idea of being spiritual and what that means to you. There's a tendency to imagine some ideal of what it means to be spiritual and how a spiritual person should be, how they should think and feel and behave, which is generally someone who is always serene and peaceful, happy or blissful, someone who never gets angry or worried or experiences any sort of negative emotion, someone who is always positive, someone who is very wise or knowledgeable, someone who is never wrong, never selfish, never makes mistakes. And that can often lead to a sense of superiority or arrogance. 
And it's always worth reflecting on these things because it's just the sort of thing that we tend to be unaware of. A person who's arrogant or self-absorbed or whatever it happens to be usually isn't aware of it. So when we think this doesn't apply to me, think again because it might. And maybe we just aren't willing to admit it even to ourselves because that also doesn't fit with the image that we have of ourselves. Whatever the case, however we might imagine that ideal, there's a tendency to try and present oneself in that way, to live up to that image through a kind of pretense. We pretend to be spiritually advanced. We pretend to be blissful or peaceful. We pretend to be wise. We pretend to be without flaw. In some cases, we may pretend to be enlightened, or at least we might imitate the behavior of those we perceive as enlightened, even if we don't make such bold claims. And so we present ourselves in such a way that is disingenuous or inauthentic. We're not really being true to where we are on our journey. We're not really being honest and transparent. And it's not always just a matter of trying to fool others, although that may be a part of it, but more than this, we try to fool ourselves. And it's actually much easier to fool ourselves than it is to fool others. Other people may see right through it. In fact, quite often they do. But it's as if we really don't want to admit to ourselves that we still have areas to work on, areas to grow in, things to learn, things to let go of. We try to convince ourselves that we're much more advanced than we actually are which means that we might deny our own negative feelings, we might deny our own vices, our own ignorance, our own various egocentric tendencies. We might deny all sorts of things. Instead, we repress these things or do our best to cover them up or just avert our attention or deny them or make elaborate excuses by rationalizing it and in some sense explaining it away. And however we go about it, what it really comes down to is the fact that we aren't really being honest with ourselves. Now, spirituality is about waking up, waking up from illusion, waking up to reality. And this kind of denial and pretense is a kind of self-delusion because it's an unwillingness to see things as they really are, to see oneself as you really are currently. There are certain things in ourselves which we don't want to acknowledge. We don't want to look at. And so we close our eyes to those things. And in some cases, we may go so far as to delude ourselves into believing those things don't exist in us at all, that we've transcended them that we've left all of that behind. So when we're engaged in that sort of self-deception, we're not waking up. We're actually creating a whole new illusion to get lost in. And there's a lot of people who think they're awake, but actually they're deeply asleep and only dream that they're awake. And they might give all the appearance of being awake. They may present themselves as being very spiritual, very peaceful or blissful and so on. And they may speak in such a way that makes them appear very knowledgeable or wise or authoritative. But it may all be an exaggeration. It may all be a facade. And underneath all of that, there are many unconscious and unresolved tendencies which that person is unwilling to own up to and address. And sometimes you can see right through it, or you might just get the sense that there's something disingenuous about it. You can usually sense when someone is hiding something or when they aren't being authentic. But to the person engaged in that, it may be the case that they don't see it at all, even when it's obvious to everyone else. Because sometimes it's much easier to fool yourself than it is to fool others. And once again, the aim is really to fool oneself. So it doesn't matter so much whether or not others are fooled by it, perhaps only to the degree that others might play along and reinforce our illusion. Even if it seems that we're trying to fool others, we only do that to gain their approval or perhaps their admiration 
which we do for our own benefit to reinforce the idea that we're spiritually advanced or that we're perfect or righteous without flaw, without any more need to grow, to reinforce whatever story we tell ourselves about how wise and awake we are. Now, why we do this is a whole other thing. There can be all sorts of reasons, but anyone who is genuinely interested in growth and awakening, we have to begin by acknowledging these things in ourselves. And in order to acknowledge them, we have to be very honest with ourselves, to recognize whenever these things show up, and to have the willingness to address them as they do. So long as we deny these things, so long as we repress them, or pretend they aren't there, or distract ourselves, or avert our attention away from them, or deflect or project, there's no resolving them. We can only resolve what we first acknowledge. And as challenging as this can be at times, it can also be a very beautiful thing when we embrace the opportunity for growth, the opportunity for awakening. Whenever you discover something and begin to address it, it can be very empowering, even liberating and to see what unfolds from that, because often that opens us up to so many other wonderful things. And when you embrace growth, you embrace life. As I said in the beginning, there is growth and there is death. You're either growing or you're dead. So long as one is living, there is always room for growth. There's always some lesson to be learned. There is always room for expansion. There is always something more to be discovered. To be more aware of ourselves moment to moment, aware of our own tendencies, our own tendency to deny or repress or to make excuses, and instead to be willing to acknowledge our own ignorance, our own attachments, our own blockages, our own illusions, our own bullshit so that we can grow from all of that. To understand that that's what life is. Life is growth. As long as you're alive, there's always room to grow. And the more that we embrace growth, the more we embrace life. 